The first presentation is uh, from uh, Natalie. Uh, she will talk about some uh, some trial grouting, uh, some testing with grouting up front uh, for uh, this this project at uh, Niagara Falls in uh, in Canada. Natalie, take it away. Okay, thanks, Gerald. Let's make sure I have control. Perfect. So hi, everyone. Thanks for attending this webinar today. Um, as Gerald said, I'm Natalie Solis from WSP, formerly Golda Associates. Uh, and I'm going to give a presentation that my colleague Valfa Rombo and I gave back in January at the Grouting Conference on our paper about the results of trial grouting at Ontario Power Generations, Sir Adam Beck Pump Generating Storage Facility in Niagara Falls, Canada. So I'm going to set the stage and talk about the project background and the design of the grout curtain, and then go into the design of the trial program, the findings of that program, and the resulting modifications to the production grouting, and then finish off with some summary thoughts. Um, and actually, as I said, back at the grouting conference um, in January, which is totally applicable to the ITS money theme here today, is I'd like to frame today's talk by saying that there was nothing particularly complex about the planned means and methods for this grouting program. But what was significant and what I'd like you to take away is that there was so much value in carrying out a trial program um, for a project of a sensitive nature such as this one. It will probably save you money and it will definitely save you headaches down the road. So this project um, is located in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. It's a 300 hectare reservoir contained by a ring dike structure uh, that stores water from the Niagara River during off peak hours and is then used to generate power during peak demand periods. And it was first brought into service in 1957. So the dike that contains the reservoir is a 7.4 kilometer um, long dike, and it ranges from 4.6 to about 20.5 meters high. Uh, this somewhat uh, blurry cross section here shows the configuration of the dike structure. So the seepage reduction element is an inclined clay core with a clay tongue extending into the upstream side and clay blankets over other select areas of the reservoir floor. So in 1958, about uh, a year after the reservoir was commissioned, a sinkhole developed on the upstream slope of the dike. Um, the mechanism for the sinkhole was interpreted to be concentrated seepage in the shallow bedrock, which caused some erosion of the foundation materials below the dike's core. So a subsequent remediation program was then undertaken, which involved installation of a one kilometer long grout curtain, which you can see them hard at work at in these photos followed by reconstruction of the affected section of the dike, and then they placed some additional clay blanket material within the reservoir floor at this location as well. So since that time, um, the facility has successfully operated. However, some sinkholes and depressions had periodically been noted on the downstream side of the dike leading uh, to concerns that there was ongoing flow within the shallow bedrock, potentially causing piping of the dike foundation materials. Uh, the owner, Ontario Power Generation, or OPG, uh, launched a three-phased action plan to proactively improve the safety of the dike, starting with a desktop conceptual study, and then going to a definition phase, which involved on-site investigations with the reservoir trained, and the development of the subsequent improvement program. Uh, that improvement program consisted of short-term and long-term remedial measures, and the long-term remedial measures involved seepage control through placement of, uh, of a liner in some locations of the reservoir floor, and then where we came in, which was installation of a new grout curtain. So this new grout curtain was planned as an update to the remedial works that were done in 1958, and would be installed through the existing clay core to supplement the liner that I mentioned in reducing seepage gradients across the dike and also reducing the potential for erosion of those foundation materials through the near surface bedrock. So here you can see the inclined clay core 
um, the access platform here in pink um, that was constructed on the upstream side to facilitate the production works, and then the planned location of the grout curtain itself here in red. The geology of the PGS site consists of generally fractured uh, dollar stone units of the uh, um, Lockport and Deque formations, underlain by a generally low permeability shale unit called the Rochester Formation. So reviewing historical records, the 1958 works had encountered the majority of their voids in these upper dollar stone units, um, and then tied the base of their curtain into the Rochester shale. So during our project definition phase between um, 2011 and 2014, we confirmed the low permeability of the Rochester shale below the reservoir and selected it as the tie-in for the new curtain as well. So a bit more about the new curtain design. Um, it's a 1.2 kilometer long curtain designed as an extension of the 1958 curtain with a 50 meter overlap section. So it was to be constructed through that inclined clay core with a single row of vertically oriented holes and two stages of treatment. First, contact grouting of the overburden um, bedrock interface through MPSBs, followed by stage grouting of the underlying bedrock. So the bedrock grouting is fairly straightforward. So we'll uh, elaborate a bit more on the contact grouting design, which was really what we were curious to learn more about through the trial program. Um, so the approach for the contact grouting was adapted from methods proposed by STAIR at the grouting conference back in 2012, um, with the intent uh, being to target any potential lenses or layers of sand or gravel at the overburden bedrock contact that could have been contributing to piping or erosion of those dike foundation materials. Um, while also protecting the clay core material above the contact zone. Um, and that was done using geotextile barrier bags shown in um, light blue on these schematics to isolate the contact zone below and allow us to then fill the annular space above the bag with casing grout. So this aerial photo uh, taken during the project while the reservoir was drained shows the, the layout of the site. Niagara Falls is about five to six miles up further that way. Um, this is the Niagara Gorge and the Niagara River. The yellow dashed line shows the 1958 failure area um, and 1958 curtain. Um, the blue line shows our uh, new grout curtain with the overlap section. Um, all on the upstream side. And then our two trial panels, um, the south trial area and the north trial area on the downstream side of the dike, just adjacent to the US customs and border control area. So the trial program was basically a, a means and methods program for the main production works inside the reservoir. Um, so it was intended to demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed grouting methods, particularly with respect to the contact zone. Um, and it also had the added benefit of helping uh, optimize procedures and assess the level of effort for the main works, like what order of holes we would likely need to get to to achieve the target ground improvement. So the trial focused on two 24 meter long panels located just downstream of the dike um, and adjacent to the main curtain alignment. Uh, here's the north trial area, as I said, and the south trial area. Uh, and the design for these trial panels was intended to exactly mirror that for the production grouting program. They were comprised of a single row of holes with contact grouting, followed by bedrock grouting um, with a tie into that low permeability uh, Rochester shield unit below. So at each panel, uh, drilling and grouting activities were done from, uh, from constructed rock fill pads uh, using duplex rotary drilling methods to install the casings uh, so we could minimize disturbance to the overburden materials. A 0.5 meter rock socket was drilled into the bedrock surface for installation of a sleeve pot across the contact to facilitate grouting. And then after contact routing, uh, just top hammer percussion drilling um, 
to drill the holes in bedrock with water as a flushing medium. So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. After grouting was complete at each of those trial areas, uh, the panels were excavated so we could actually look at the exposed pipes, the surrounding overburden, the contact zone that we were so interested in. Um, so this was done with a very skilled excavator operator who carefully, um, carefully removed the overburden around each pipe so that we could uh, inspect them while keeping the pipes intact. Um, it was, was really critical to allow us to inspect those pipes without damaging them. So what did we actually find? Well, first of all, the good, um, the casing grout had completely filled the annulus above the barrier bags in all the pipes, and the bags were properly inflated, with good contact to the surrounding overburden, and they were infilled with nice hard filtrated grout. Um, this gave us really good confidence that the bags would work as intended to isolate the clay core in the dike and protect it from the drilling and grouting below once we got to the production curtain. We also found that the contact area, which, as I've been saying, was one of the main focuses of the program, was actually quite competent. We, we didn't find any layers of sand or gravel, and the grout volumes injected at the, um, injected at the contact through the, through the sleeve port were, um, were much lower than anticipated because of that good quality overburden. In fact, um, one of the holes in the north trial area that had taken more than 5,000 liters of grout at the contact had no grout visible in the surrounding overburden. So that really told us that all of that grout volume went into the bedrock portion of the contact stage. And uh, and finally, the, the bedrock surface itself was, was also of good quality. It was, it was quite even um, with generally just a few low aperture joint, uh, joint traces on surface. So what was not so good? Well, um, beneath a few of the inflated barrier bags, instead of production grout, we, we found ungrouted voids um, and overburden or a mix of overburden and grout um, below the barrier bag and above the bedrock. And then in the rock socket themselves, um, these were often filled with overburden and not production grout as, uh, as was intended. So that was quite, quite concerning as you can imagine. So um, really from all this, we, we could infer that the contact grouting through the sleeve ports at the overburdened bedrock interface had quite limited success. Um, and additionally, there was, potential to leave ungrouted voids in the overburden below the barrier bag. Um, moreover, the, the good quality of the overburden and bedrock surface really led us to the conclusion that contact grouting was not actually warranted at this site. So the, the overall result of the trial program was elimination of the contact grouting altogether by setting the barrier bag just at the top of, of bedrock. Um, so it would continue to protect the dike materials above and then adding a second injection port below the barrier bag with a deepened rock socket. But once we uh, implemented this, we actually continued to see really low grout takes through the rock socket um, stage. So eventually we, we shortened that um, and eliminated use of sleeve ports um, for, for grouting the upper bedrock altogether. So, uh, you know, some summary and, and conclusion thoughts here, you know, the, the trial program was a huge benefit to the overall project. It helped us identify the possibility of leaving ungrouted voids in the dike foundation materials. Um, and identify that contact grouting was not necessary. The trial really helped us get an early assessment of our means and methods, and, and most importantly, identify design modifications before actually disturbing um, the embankment. Um, and what really also stood out to me um, on this program was that implementing these significant design changes during the works was, was only possible with the close collaboration between the owner, the engineer, and the contractor. 
um, that working relationship between all three was, was critical to the overall success. And then on the theme of testing and investigation, saving money, what, what did we actually save? Well, we eliminated the whole contact routing portion of the work. So we originally estimated 2,500 contact routing hours um, for this program, which represented about 2 million Canadian or 1.5 million US dollars of savings to the owner um, for that item. And to give you an idea of the price to value ratio, um, the trial program was, was only about 5% of the original contract value for the overall grouting program. So it was, uh, it was, it was well worth it. And, uh, and that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Natalie.